Hi everybody, this is God Sad for the Sad Truth. Two nights ago, my wife and I decided to head off to uh, watch a movie in, uh, at the theater. This is something that we rarely do these days in the age of uh, Netflix and so on. Uh, we went to see Mr. Gross and Racist himself, Ben Affleck and The Accountant. Uh, not a great movie, but I suppose it passes the time. Uh, but the point of today's clip is to actually... Uh, recount something that happened to us in the theater that was truly astonishing, difficult to understand uh, the mechanisms by which such a reality could unfold. So we were in a theater that probably has maybe, I don't know, 40 rows. It's a, it's a huge theater, 40, 50 rows with three, if you like, columns. There's a central column probably that could seat, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 people. And then there are two side uh, columns you know, maybe 10, 10 rows, each, uh, 10, 10 seats each. So you're talking about at least a 40 by 30, uh, so, you know, well over a thousand seater. Uh, that's, and that's probably a conservative estimate. And uh, there weren't too many people at the theater. Uh, so we pretty much had the, the pick of all possible seats. So we sat in the center aisle, uh, you know, at the, in the, at the end of one of the aisles, around the middle of the rows, uh, as probably most people would. And as I said, there's almost nobody in the theater. So maybe about five minutes after we got there, uh, two women uh, walked by in the aisle. And again, remember, this is a theater that seats at least a thousand people. And, and there's probably at that point, no more than 10 people in the theater. And they sit immediately in the two seats in front of us. Now, this is such an insane move that you would think that it is from candid camera, right? I mean, it is impossible to imagine two people who are so miscalibrated about the reality, the physical reality around them, and any social etiquette violation that they would be oblivious to the fact that there is a 1,000-seat theater <clears throat> excuse me, that is rather fully vacant and they decide to sit immediately in front of us. Now, we had, I had put my coat in, you know, in, on the seat in front of me. And so when they decided to sit there, I actually had to move my coat. So I moved it one seat over from where they were sitting. Then they decided that where they were sitting was not right. They wanted to scoot one seat over to the left and so I moved my coat a second time for them. Again, let me reiterate, this is in a theater that can seat a thousand people that at that point has about 10 people in it. So we ended up actually moving from that, from our seats, one row backward. And so the question is, what is it that could make someone so oblivious to other people's I mean, I, I don't want to say rights. I mean, physical space, common decency. You know, I mean, you mean, you're a social animal. You should come endowed with a minimal level of innate understanding of social dynamics. They were probably both in their 50s, maybe their 60s. They didn't seem to be drunk. They didn't seem to be lobotomized. They didn't seem to be blind that they could not see the realities in the theater in terms of the physical realities. So what could explain two grotesque buffoons behaving this way? I'm not sure I can explain it other than to think that they're utterly oblivious and uh, frankly they're probably people who don't score very highly on uh, whatever psychometric scale that measures uh, how considerate you are. So there you have it. If you have any ideas as to why these two grotesque monsters uh, might have done this. Let's hear in the comments. Wishing you all a very, very happy new year, a safe new year. Hopefully the upcoming year will be better, uh, be it in terms of the amount of violence and hatred and craziness that there is in the world. Alas, I don't think that that will happen, but we can hope for it. So wishing you all a good year. Talk to you soon. Ciao.